Hey, good afternoon. It's good to have you with us. We start in Guazulu Natal with this story. The police minister, Peggy Taylor, says he was shocked by the events in Phoenix in Guazulu Natal. At least 36 people were killed in the suburb during the peak of looting and riots in the country. 20 people have now been arrested. Taylor and Guazulu Natal Premier Sile Zigalala were giving an update on the situation there. And let me take you to ENCA's senior reporter, Desen Tatia, who joins us now for an update from that media briefing. Desen, a lot coming out of that briefing, but it would seem uh, the focus mainly being on the situation in Phoenix. What are the main highlights of what uh, government has been able to establish around that situation uh, that, that transpired in Phoenix? That's right, Tulas. You know, it would seem, and I think there have been conversations around this, that all of the focus after this unrest seems to have shifted to what transpired in Phoenix over the past few weeks. And I think with that in mind, the police minister started his briefing by mentioning that police were still actively investigating the other cases where more than 340 people had died between Gauteng and KZN. But he then zoomed in on this Phoenix issue where, as you mentioned, 36 people had been killed there, 22 arrests now that we're hearing about. But importantly, there have also been other cases that have come out of there, cases of attempted murder, of uh, assault. And what he did in this briefing is he unpacked what he labeled to be, to be facts, because there's been a lot of misinformation. He spoke at length about what fake news was doing to this, to, to this current situation in this current climate where tensions have been high, there's been, there's been a lot of um, anger coming from communities on both sides, from Phoenix, from the surrounding areas, from communities, uh, uh, from Indian communities, from black African communities. You know, on the one side, we've been hearing how police inefficiency had led to many community members having to, to take up arms, so to speak, but the police minister spoke specifically about how some of that, how some of those patrols had turned violent. And in his statement, he says some of those had taken a racial turn. And I think language is important here because what had angered the Phoenix community in, in, in all of these discussions is that they felt that they all had been painted with the same brush through what had happened. But we can't get away from the facts here, Tulas, that this is what police reports are saying, that there were incidents where some of that had turned violent and criminal elements, vigilantism and all of that had crept in, which had resulted in the death of about 36 people. Before we continue that conversation, let's listen to what Becky Kele had to say about those numbers. Events in Phoenix, which I have lined, have claimed lives of 36 people. Our investigation showed that 30 of those who were killed were shot. Two were burned to death, one was stabbed and another was run over by a motor vehicle. Two others died from the brutal injuries they sustained after being assaulted. In total, police are investigating 52 cases of attempted murder and probing nine cases of common assault and 16 cases of assault GBH. Members of the media, police investigation continue and these figures will, update, will be updated. Want to be very clear about this. What happened in Phoenix with criminal acts of the worst kind which also took a racial turn? These acts have no place in our society and the perpetrators will be arrested and prosecuted. A team of 31 experienced detectives from the province and national have been deployed to investigate, make arrests and attend court cases to ensure justice prevails. So over and above the whole situation around vigilantism and the racial tensions in the area of Phoenix, um, Dyson, there's also been a focus on the role of private security and just how armed some of them are, um, some of them being um, security companies that reportedly had been flagged uh, previously for their behavior. What has the minister been saying about the role of private security as well as the ammunition uh, that was found in the area? Uh, tie that in with the number of arrests that have been made. Well, he spoke at length about that as well, and he mentioned how in some cases they had found that private security companies had overstepped their mark. 
So to that end, the police then had uh, taken in firearms from some of the security companies and had tested these. But over and above the private security companies, they also spoke about other guns that were, that were seized in the area. More than 100 guns were, were taken in, in a raid there. But you know, to us, the other side of this is that while all of this attention has been focused on these crimes, equally, the minister spoke about how there, were, there was assistance coming from certain parts of the Phoenix community in ensuring that those that were behind these crimes were brought to book. So to that end, there have been many people that have been assisting police, detectives. There are about 30-odd uh, detectives that are working on these cases, and, uh, to, and these, these community members have been helping. There have also been uh, peace initiatives as well that have been in the area that are ensuring that there's now a, a rebuilding that's happening there. Let's listen to what the police minister had to say about uh, the role of private security companies in that area during this time. Their investigations have led to the arrest of 22 suspects. Some of these suspects are allegedly connected to several murder cases, while others have char charges relating to attempted murder, malicious damage to property, and defeating the ends of justice. All suspects are currently going through the court processes, with some appearing in court for the first time as we speak. Detectives are investigating the role of the private security firms in the violence. The response of the local SEPs to the events will also be looked into. Working closely with the private security industry, CIRA, the team of investigators has seized 152 firearms from four private security companies working in the area. 112 illegal firearms have also been seized during police operations in Phoenix in this period since violence started. There are 152 firearms that belong to the companies. But beyond that, there are 112 that have been found seized around Phoenix since this time started. The seizure of these firearms is within the ambit of Firearms Control Act and the firearms have been sent for ballistic analysis. So, so 154 firearms that have been seized, um, uh, Dessin, that belong to various security companies um, within the context of the unrest and the violence that we saw um, in, in the last few weeks. But what is the minister saying about other incidents that have the potential to, you know, sow seeds for future instability and crime in the area, uh, not only of Phoenix, but across KwaZulu Natal, the other ammunition uh, that was stolen uh, at, at one point, but also issues to do with the raids um, during which firearms and other equipment is stolen uh, from police. Uh, police are robbed of those um, with the recent incident. I think it was in the Northern Cape. Yeah, he, he, he did speak about it at, at, at length, uh, Chulas. I, I did miss some of your question uh, because of, uh, of an audio problem here. But I want to talk about this issue of, um, of ammunition, for example. So that is a big problem that police are facing at the moment. You'll remember that there was also a container that was, uh, that, that was attacked here during the unrest. And the provincial commissioner here, General Nguanazi, spoke about how in that instance that, that ammunition now ended up in the hands of of looters and whoever else it's now infiltrated its way into different communities and he says that with that as well that that is a question of two cases that are being investigated there in relation to that the one is why was that ammunition being stored in a container that is a case under investigation and how was it then moved from the the, the port to that storage area where it was uh, to to ensure that it was in a position where that container was able to be broken into. So police are dealing with, with, with that problem as well. While we're on this topic, the police minister also touched on what occurred in Le Montville. We asked him a question about these raids that have been going on because you would have seen there that there were reports that the community had stood up to police. He, he says that tires were, were, were slashed. Now, this is something the community denies. They said that they never actually did that. But, but the question that it leads to is how will police proceed 
in instances like this where communities are now not allowing police to come in and recover those stolen goods. The police minister says that it will not stop them from going forward, says that no one should actually have looted goods in their possession and that they will continue to do this with as little bloodshed as possible. But that might be too little too late because, as you'll remember, there was a lady that was killed in a confrontation there just about a week ago in Le Monfort. That case is still being investigated by IPA to this. Yeah, and I wonder in the coming weeks and months and even years, how many times, um, you know, a police ba ballistics will be done after a crime has been committed um, of one kind or another and the, re the returning results will show that perhaps some of that ammunition may have originally belonged to the SAPS and stolen during that looting. Just lastly, uh, Dustin, and perhaps on a, on a lighter note, uh, what's this about Begitele and drinking wine? He says he doesn't take the, the drink of wine, does he? <laughs> <laughs> Not for him, but he didn't answer the follow-up question of whether he likes anything stronger than that. <laughs> All right. That's ENC's Desen Tatia. Of course, the, the context of all of that is that Begit Taylor was responding to one Sizo Pilam Kize, who is, um, you know, part of the ANC Youth League National Task Team, who was captured um, a few weeks ago, um, talking about how the government had not responded to the situation in Phoenix and saying that, where is Begit Taylor? He's sitting wherever he is and he's drinking wine. And Minister Begit Taylor responding and saying that, no, not for him. Not wine.